Hi folks, it's Evil here from Thunamis Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thunamis Fishing Tips. If you're passing through for the first time, feel free to subscribe and if you're tuning in again, as usual, it's great to see you. Okay, so today folks, we're looking for, we're going to try to catch one of those big bruisers, one of those big huge carp. And uh, I'm running two different rigs. Let me get this line in. This one is the pre-tied T-turn bait rig. So we'll get this line in first. Perfect. Okay, so that's a pre-tied rig. All you got to do is snap on a sinker. And in fact, they come with a nice uh, sinker snap as well. And fluorocarbon line, 25 pound. And on this rod, I'm running 20 pound fluorocarbon line. So when I'm looking for those big carp, there's no room for very thin line because they'll break you off like nothing. So 20 pound test fluorocarbon. And my bait rig comes pre-tied pre with 25 pound test. So I'm gonna get a second rod out there. This one I'm gonna run with a sinker slide. I've got a Thundermist sinker slide on here. And if you take a look, it's got a, a great big sinker snap on there, which accommodates those bell sinkers really, really nicely. And uh, the advantage of this is the carp will be able to pick up the corn and undetected by the weight whereas with the other rig it's a bolt rig they pick it up they feel the sinker and then they bolt away so it's kind of two different both exciting ways to uh, to fish for carp i'm going to get this line out there so they changed the regulations this year in ontario you can run multiple lines for carp as long as you're using a, a bait like corn you can't use worms or anything like that uh, and i am running corn today um, and what I do is I load my hook up completely with corn. Now, if, if I find that I'm losing my corn to smaller fish pecking away at it, I also brought some uh, bait pockets with me for catch a carp and I'll fill a bait pocket with corn and use that. But for now, I'm gonna try using straight corn on a hook. The hook's loaded, two different systems out there. I brought a third rod, I may or may not uh, get it wet we'll see but for now I got two lines out and I'm hoping for an exciting day I want to catch myself a big bruiser if possible stay tuned folks <laughs> so I decided to put a third fishing rod out and good thing I did it's the third rod that struck unbelievable that's the thing now what I was able to do with the third rod oh it's a nice carp I had my one line out a little further, one a little closer, one a little closer. This one hit mid, not too far, not too close. Okay, feels like a decent carp and he's peeling some drag, he's peeling some drag. Oh, it's a nice carp. Yes, it is one of those bruisers I was looking for right there, oh yes. That's a nice bruiser. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is what it's all about folks right here. Oh, that's a nice carp. Now, I had to get my other lines out of the water or you would have seen a couple of good runs from this fish. Oh. There's a, another one or two here coming up. That's the problem when you fish with multiple fishing rods. You gotta get the other lines out of the way. Otherwise, these carp will just tangle you up like nothing. And, oh, and I mentioned the hook. You need a good quality hook. I mentioned good quality, strong line. You also need a good quality, strong hook because these big carp, they'll straighten out a thin wire hook like nothing. And I can't really muscle him in. He knows he's getting closer to shore. Okay, I got my net here. Whoa! Oh yeah. Oh no. Got my other line in the net. <laughs> multiple lines, multiple rods. That's the one thing I don't like about multiple rods. Okay. Almost, he saw the net. Oh, he's heavy, he's heavy. That's a big carp. Yes, get in the net. Oh. Oh. 
season. Oh, that's a, that's a big carp. My goodness. Look at that fish. Holy mackerel. That is one big carp. Looks like ready to spawn too. So we're going to snap a quick photo and uh, we're going to get this guy right back in the water again. That's a beauty. He was hooked right where he should be, right in the side of the mouth. And look how thick and wide this fish is. Look at that. That's the width of my hand on that fish. Okay, let's get a quick weight on him. We'll leave him right in the net. Oh, 20, 20.1. 20.1, take a pound off, that's a 19 pounder right there. That's a solid 19 pound carp right there. That's what it's all about. That's the beauty of carp fishing. You have got the opportunity to catch a big, beautiful, powerful fish. Look at this fish. Wow, look at how wide, look at, yeah, I know you wanna go. Look at how wide. It's unbelievable the width on this fish. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous carp. Ah, see their mouth? It's like a sucker kind of mouth. Oh, he's heavy. See the mouth on him? That's what they do. They just suck up the bait and uh, they'll clean a hook of corn like nothing. They just pick it up, clean it up and drop it real quick. That is a big, beautiful carp. Oh my goodness. Okay, Mr. Carp. I know he wants to go. Beautiful. That's a nice release. I love it. Absolutely love it. Here's the thing, folks. Fisher for carp. Boatless angling. You're allowed multiple lines now. Always check your regulations. Find out what's new for the year, what's changed. And in this case, it's a change for the better. In fact, we might even attract some of those big European carp tournaments here in North America. And that would be great for the sport and for the economy. So. Let's hope that happens, but right now I know what's gonna happen. I gotta get another line out there. Maybe two lines this time, not three. See if I can get into some more fish, but wherever you're tuning in from today, folks, I wanna thank you for joining me on today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips, and as always, until next time, good luck and good fishing. Wowzer.